Hello, different sort of video today. This is an unscripted tutorial on how to set up your SEO device for Geometry Dash the correct way. First, I'll talk about hardware. First, I would, after you get your SEO device, um, just in case, I would order a cord from Amazon Basics at, or any other USB certified company. I'll uh, include the list of USB certified companies in the description. So you can get a USB 3.0 cord to USB-C and you should probably get one that's 6 feet or more and it should have data transfer up to 5 gigabytes per second or more. It just, that's just so you can have 8K Hertz better and so that um, there are no cord faults with the SEO device because a lot of people have complained about cord faults and then if you go to Gatoron's website or go to AliExpress, I recommend getting orange dual rail switches. The, the important word here is dual rail because the switches are a lot more stable that way. Um, Gatoron jade switches or Gatoron white switches. And once you have all of those installed, I would go to save device for web at next.saodevice.com slash home and I would just connect this here and if you need if it needs to flash the firmware do that I would get the latest firmware and I'll cover firmware a bit more in device options but first let's get started with talking about the buttons first of all you're not going to want it on default keyboard default or mouse or anything like that you're going to want it on keyboard mode and this is because other modes will have a set debounce, but keyboard will not. And I'll get to why that's important later, but for these, you'll want to have them set in keyboard mode. Next, I would set either these to either spacebar, arrow, or whatever you have binded to jump. If you have it on mouse click, if you have it on mouse click or anything related to the mouse, it will have a ton of debounce. And that's very, very bad, especially if you play spam levels or challenges that have wave spam in them, because then your releases won't be very good. Next, the next important thing is rapid trigger. And first, um, I would calibrate your switches. That's very, very important. And there's a lot of misinformation regarding switch calibration that I've seen on other YouTube tutorials. When you calibrate your switch, you're going to want to press the switch down, not harder than usual than you would normally press. Don't shove it down, or don't forcibly strike it down there. Just press it how you would normally press, and you want to bottom it out. You don't want to look for a certain number. It just tells it just it just tells the computer where the bottom of the switch is, so all of these numbers can be done the right way. And one more thing about calibration and these numbers, if you have a Gatoron Jade switch, if you have a Gatoron Jade switch, um, the Gatoron Jade switch bottoms out at 3.5 millimeters, so you might have to be a bit more lenient because it is, it is different by a factor of 3.5 over 4. So after you've calibrated the switches, um, there are a bunch of these numbers that you can mess around with. And we're going to start off for people who don't want to use rapid trigger. I would set the rapid trigger range up to 4 and then the rapid trigger range down to 0. That has the range completely the opposite, so rapid trigger will not occur. And in order to understand release and trigger, um, the trigger setting is so the trigger setting is when you press the key. Um, the key registers a press whenever trigger is there, and it won't stop pressing until you pass release. You can set trigger and release at the same value by let's say 1.2 millimeters and one point. Also 1.2 millimeters, there you'll have a fixed actuation point like you would on just a regular keyboard. For people who do want to use rapid trigger, um, first of all, I would disable this trigger and release range. So I just put it at four, and then I'd put it at zero. 
and then for the range I would set it 0 to 4 for the entire range and then first you want to then you want to set the actuation point for your trigger the actuation point for your trigger can vary um, if you're using if you're once again if you're using Gator on Jade switches that it's scaled down from a range of four, 0 to 4 from a range of 0 to 3.5 so 0.4 it for everything else will equal 0.35 for the Jade switches what RT trigger does is if you press it down 0 0.2 then it will begin to actuate, and if you release it with 0 0.2, then it will begin to release. But if you press it down 0 0.2 in the middle of the switch, then it will start to activate again. Next, you're going to want to go to Device Options, and make sure you have the latest firmware. You want to set the pulling rate to 8000 Hz, and you're going to want to set the debounce to 1, which is the lowest it can go. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And don't forget to save the changes. I'm not going to save my changes because I don't want all of these random settings. And one more final tip, after you calibrate, you can calibrate all for all of them at once. And if you want the same settings, so you don't have to go through all three of them, I would hit sync parameters to all keys. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful information. Um, subscribe to if you want, I don't care share it around. Hopefully this becomes the SEO device guide. I'll link I'll link everything that I use in the description plus extra resources.